Nature reports on the remarkable discovery of a female figurine in a cave in southwestern Germany, believed to be at least 35,000 years old. I think culture and art was an important part of the life during that time, and so I think that gives, a, gives us a very good view about the people, and maybe we, we, we see them much closer to, to, our, to ourselves. The discovery of the female figurine from Holofels is really revolutionary in the field. It's the earliest find of this kind that we have anywhere, and it really changes our image of how people viewed their world about 35 or even 40,000 years ago. The site of Holofels is in the Ach Valley, fairly near the current water level of the river. And it's a very prominent cave, one of the largest caves in the area, readily visible. There's a long tradition of archaeology in this valley. At the moment, we are basically digging in our nation and Middle Paleolithic layers. And our first goal, I would say, is to get a little bit more information how the transition between Neanderthals and modern humans went forward and what happened during that time. The site in and of itself has a very prominent place in the landscape and we think it would have been used very early on in the settlement history of the Orgnation. The Orgnation is the first Upper Paleolithic culture in our area. The Middle Paleolithic precedes it, is characterized by Neanderthals and their material remains, and when modern humans arrive in the area, they create the Orgnation culture, which has different stone tools, organic artifacts, artworks, musical instruments. In September, we were excavating in many squares in the really uh, bottom of the Orgnation layers. And in one square, a student found a part of an ivory figurine. I actually was at a meeting in Frankfurt and Maria Moline called me up and she said there was something unusual coming up, namely fragments of what later became clear were a female figurine. We cleaned the figurine carefully, documented the surfaces, did microscopic analyses, glued the figurine together. The next thing we did was document it thoroughly with photographs, made a cast, and uh, now the publication is coming out and the next step will be exhibiting it in a major exhibit plan for September in a museum in Stuttgart. So what you can see is, so here's the complete arm and shoulder coming across to the belly, the large breast projecting forward, and actually very broad shoulders and you know, kind of a thick torso. The head is conspicuously missing. The vulva is you know, deeply incised. The breasts are you know, large, forward projecting, and it's the sexual characteristics of the figurine that really were depicted with great care and are the main characteristics. Instead of a head, there's a perforation that shows it's a bit weathered, but it also shows signs of polish. So it's completely clear that the figurine was used as a pendant. Taken at face value, it seems that this would be the oldest figurine from, from our region. That in and of itself is remarkably important because previous to this, we've found a lot of evidence for working ivory. We found lots of ivory artifacts, ornaments, tools, but we never actually found a figurative representation. So that is new and shows that figurative art was part of the organization culture from the very beginning in this region. There's been a hundred years of research on the meaning of Venus figurines, and I think at a simplistic level, it's clear that there's a connection between sexuality and reproduction, and it changes our way of looking at things and suggests that reproduction, fecundity, are key parts of what people were thinking about at that time. People were not just getting food, finding food, hunting, and so on. They had time to do, to play music. They had time to uh, establish art. And so I think culture and art was an important part of the life during that time. And so I think that gives, a, gives us a very good view about the people. And maybe we, we, we see them much closer to, to, our, to ourselves. What we need to do in the coming months and years is try to complete the picture. The, the left arm is missing and the left shoulder. We want to continue the excavation into the area immediately adjacent to where the other fragments were found in the hopes of finding the missing pieces. We're talking about a position that's about 20 meters from the entrance of the cave. We've been digging here for many years and the organization starts about two meters below the current surface. And now we're at a depth about three meters below the surface. So we've gone through a whole meter of organization deposits. We need to get a bigger area of excavation and get more data on the context of the discovery to uh, make a better contextualized interpretation to the picture of how daily life was 
35,000 years ago. I didn't even view it as conceivable that this kind of find could come from the orgnation, especially not from the basal orgnation. The whole, the whole discovery really is truly exceptional and uh, came as an enormous surprise to me and people I've talked to in the field also are pretty much speechless about this. So we're going to have to uh, process this information for a bit and see how things uh, develop.